Ki Tu, the world's most deadly mountain to climb. There are only 14 mountains in the globe that exceed 8,000 meters in elevation. Upon crossing that height, you are transported to the dead zone, a region in which there is insufficient oxygen in the air for humans to survive. As a result, you become weakened and have limited brain capacity. The Savage Mountain, a mountain so treacherous that no human has ever dared to reach its peak, is a place of raw beauty. While summoning these mountains is an accomplishment that only thousands can claim, summoning the deadliest mountain in the world is a matter of hundreds. Its unforgiving faith has claimed the lives of many who have attempted to conquer it, and every step is a battle against the elements. This is the reason why ascending K2 is tantamount to death. Breaking down K2 in the 1950s until recently, Mountaineer George Bell characterized K2 as a savage mountain that tries to kill you, and he was not mistaken. The fatality rate was approximately 20 per four successful summits, with an average of one death per four successful summits. However, in 2022, K2 tragically claimed three additional lives. Additionally, it was previously accurate to assert that more humans have been into space than have stood on K2's peak. I will elaborate on the term until recently in the video. However, to fully comprehend the utter brutality of K2, it is advisable to divide it into four sections, location, altitude, weather, and technical difficulty. K2's Location Let us commence with the location. The British first surveyed K2 in 1856 to determine the border between Kashmir and China. The surveyor recorded the altitude of a mountain and named it K1, which was followed by K2, K3, and so forth. K2 is truly remote as evidenced by its name. Afterward, they would ask the local people, what's this mountain called? Which is where they got names such as Kashabram and Kanjipsar. K2 was so isolated that no local had a name for it, so K2 stuck. Its remoteness made it hard to get to before you even begin to ascend. It takes roughly a week to even reach base camp. In this week, you have to travel over a highly technical glacier and a rocky trail, which could easily lead to injuries before you've even begun to climb the mountain. You're also staying in tents every night. Compare this to Mount Everest, where there's a much easier walking trail to reach base camp with warm tea houses to stay in along the way. The remoteness and altitude of K2 make it significantly more difficult to obtain a search and rescue helicopter. Additionally, the fact that only the Pakistan Army is permitted to operate in this airspace due to its proximity to the Indian war zone increases the likelihood of fatalities for any injuries. K2 is situated in the Karakoram mountain range. K2 is the second highest peak in the globe, reaching an altitude of 28,251 feet or 8,611 meters. It is a member of an exclusive club with only 14 members, as it is above 8,000 meters. The fact that you enter the death zone is what renders these mountains so lethal. In the final ascent, a location where the body consumes oxygen at a rate that exceeds its capacity to replenish it. An extended body attempts to acclimate by producing more red blood cells, which will ultimately result in mortality if you remain in the dead zone without supplementary oxygen. Your heart beats more rapidly and non-essential bodily functions are suppressed. Additionally, you breathe more profoundly. Acclimatization is a lengthy procedure that may require several weeks. This is the reason why individuals experience altitude sickness, which includes high-altitude pulmonary edema also known as hate or cerebral edema, also known as ACE. The dev zone has experienced numerous fatalities as a result of the reduced brain capacity and lack of strength. Even though weather forecasting technologies have advanced astronomically since K2's first summit in 1954, the weather on K2 remains unchanged. There is an understanding amongst its climbers that it's still not predictable. It's situated further north than Everest, making for an increased likelihood of incredibly foul weather due to the jet stream. The jet stream is a fast-moving river of air in Earth's atmosphere, which can bring rapid changes in weather. In the winter, gusts at K2 can reach hurricane force levels, which would throw climbers off the mountain as if they were just a feather in the wind. On top of this, there is a heightened risk of avalanches, the severity of which was evident in the 2008 K2 disaster. Some specifics of the events that took place on the 1st and 2nd of August in 2008, which led to 11 deaths and three serious injuries, are still unknown. However, what we do know is that an ice avalanche happened during an area of the climb known as the bottleneck. The avalanche destroyed many of the climbers' ropes, which unfortunately led to their deaths.
K2's technical difficulty initially, the climb to K2, is a losing battle due to its location, altitude, and weather. However, the actual ascent is nearly insurmountable. The most frequently traveled route on K2 is the Bruno Spur, which is taken by over 75% of climbers. The western south faces present even more challenging obstacles, and the east faces have never been climbed. Even though this is the easy route, which I use in a very sarcastic manner, the technical difficulty of K2 truly puts into perspective the danger of the mountain. Upon reaching base camp, one is at an altitude of approximately 5,000 meters. The ascent to Camp 3, which is situated at 7,350 meters, has a 60 to 70 degree inclination. Consequently, the physique is exerted from the ground. The initial challenge is a section known as the house chimney. It is a 100 foot long crack in a granite wall that is shaped like a chimney and is challenging to ascend with crampons. After this, you will essentially reach Camp 2 at 6760 meters. On the ascent to Camp 3, you will encounter one of the most challenging parts of the climb, known as the Black Pyramid. This section of K2 is nearly 400 meters in length and is a massive, massive steep rock that emerges from the main spur. To put this in perspective, the Great Pyramid of Giza is 146 meters tall. As you approach Camp 3, you will encounter a 25-foot vertical wall of ice that you must ascend. Nevertheless, you will eventually reach Camp 3, with only 1,350 meters remaining. If only it were that simple. Camp 3, which is situated on a slope of approximately 30 degrees, presents a significant challenge in terms of obtaining a good night's sleep. The initial respite is provided by Camp 4, which is situated on a relatively flat terrain. However, it is situated at an elevation of 8,000 meters, which means that you have entered the death zone. Oxygen management is now even more critical. Camp 4 can be described as the eye of the storm as you are resting, but you know that you have the toughest part of the climb to go. It's known as the bottleneck whilst you're traversing a narrow gully with a steep gradient. This is your view in overhanging Sirac or block of glacial ice weighing millions of tons, which has been known to give way such as in the 2008 disaster that we mentioned earlier this Instagram picture attempts to put into scale just how enormous it is. And this is a video of a Sarat giving way on a different mountain showing the unpredictability and impact it could have when the Sorak on K2 gives way. It's not just a bit of an eyes, it's a boss hurtling towards you with increasing speed. Now just imagine that fear and anxiety as you are tired weak and at 8000 meters up knowing that your life isn't really in your own hands but then you've done it, you've reached the peak, congratulations, all your blood sweats and tears have paid off well, the thing is it actually gets harder from here, you now have to go down, imagine the whole journey as an energy tank, but every exertion you make you lose a little bit of charge, but you're so desperate to complete your mission and reach the peak, you push your body to its absolute limits, reserving 50 of your energy for the way down, might not even cross your mind, that's why it's estimated that over 80% of deaths happen on descent, you're weaker, more tired, and have less brain power and probably have a little bit less motivation. It is an accident in the making. And as I previously stated, individuals would regard this as the most straightforward route for K2, which is a testament to the mountain's inherent peril. How K2 is becoming safer, there is some good news for those who desire to climb K2, despite the estimated 30,000 expedition costs per person. The routes are becoming more accessible. K2 is gradually being treated as Mount Everest, which increases in prominence, the recruitment of additional Sherpas, and the establishment of safer routes. The following are the annual statistics for successful summits since 1993. In truth, on July 22, 2022, over 145 climbers summited within 24 hours, shattering the previous record of 62. There were over 190 summits. This is why I previously stated that the fatality rate has decreased as a result of all of the successful summits that have occurred up until recently. However, the challenge of reaching the peak of K2 remains ruthless, and one must always maintain respect for the savage mountain that has claimed the lives of many who have stood before. The objective is to conquer its formidable terrain when Mother Nature is on one side. Supreme will always be ruled by K2. Let us know in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up, subscribe to our channel for more content, and hit the notification bell so you never miss an update. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.